All right, well, I've been building a few days out here. Had one nice sunny day, one super rainy day yesterday, and now a day that really can't make up its mind. Uh, behind me, you see I have the right doors installed almost 100%. It's going to have to come back off for painting of the closeout and figuring out how to attach the closeout piece. And I'm talking about this sheet metal wing root closeout that goes from the upper cabin structure to the bottom of the butt rib. I still have to do the piece seal on this door, but all that's pretty trivial compared to getting the thing to fit and installation of the gas strap, which turns out to be much easier than I thought it was going to be. Before we get started, April Fool's Day floated by the other day. I was reminded of a practical joke that was played on me in the 90s. I'll try and tell this quickly, not waste your time. I'd been working in a machine shop quite a bit, but aerospace was new to me. And one of the things that's odd about aerospace is hole sizes. Not used to a number seven or an F size drill. One of the things that's a little bit confusing was uh, number 30, number 40. Drill sizes are like wire gauge, sheet metal gauge, shotgun gauge, all the numbers are backwards. So a small number is large. Go figure. Anyway, my job was CNC programming of a lot of the parts we made. We did these uh, parts are called splices. I'm just going to whack one in SolidWorks here, show a picture of what it looks like. Doesn't really matter. Prank has to do with the whole size. So getting started, I messed up a few times. Number 30 should be smaller. It's not. Put some number 30 holes in where some number 40 holes belong. So one day I get this guy's machine shop lead comes in and says, hey, you want to come take a look at this? Words you never want to hear. Go out on the factory floor. There's a inspection station in the milling area. Now what's taking place at this particular light table every time a set of parts moves on to a new operation Operator sets up his machine, makes one part, take it to the quality control, takes it to the quality control inspector, so they can catch any mistakes that operation made, and hopefully any that were made before. They've got a five by five bin of about 750 parts. They've got a couple of these splices laid up on the light table, and they're measuring them. And he points out that it says number 40 on the work order, and yet on the parts number 30. 750 parts been through a lot of different workstations. Press brake operator standing there. He's had these parts in his hand. They're all shaking their heads. In fact, the press brake operator said, I guess I'm going to get my toolbox and roll it outside. He's pretty sure we're all getting fired. Dennis sits back a little bit and he goes, and it just had to happen on April 1st. Took me a few seconds. Then it was really funny. It's still funny to this day. It was a good practical joke. Anyway, through a rock star effort, Team Kit Fox, they got me my acrylic bubble smoked doors delivered to my doorstep the day I got home. My frames, I got back from powder coating. They match my instrument panel. This is the door frame, which didn't fit this hole very well at all. It's kind of tight. However, it turned out to be good enough once I ground off a little bit of weld bead. And by the way, I referenced last month that I thought these were 4130. They're not, they're aluminum. So pretty darn easy to bend and easy to drill holes through. I did have these polycarbonate pieces that had been trimmed up by the previous builder of this airplane. And they fit the openings pretty well. So what I did is I attached those with the existing undersized holes to the frames, slapped this new acrylic on top, drilled a few keyholes to hold it in place, then uh, Mark the edges and I trimmed them with my Milwaukee equivalent of a Dremel tool. Covered in white dust, sanded. I tried to finish sand and get it in, but it really took about four or five tries to get this thing to fit all the way into the hole, which it does. I had to come back. Once I did this aluminum closeout, I had to trim the top edge again because it was going to bind up here. Eventually, and with some blood, because I can't chuck a drill up properly, Got this fit and it's good to go. Now, I had to run to Nate's hangar, do a little espionage because the orientation of this bracket was, or its location was not actually obvious at all. And uh, shout out by the way to Danilo. I'm gonna mutilate your name, so I'm just gonna spell it up here instead. Sorry about that, bud. He warned me that uh, this could be very tight and I'd need to use flush rivets. So good call, thanks for pointing that out. Anyway, so you should have seen the clown show that was me sitting in the airplane yesterday trying to compress this strut to its shortest length. 
minus uh, 3 16th is what it says in the manual so that I could figure out where to locate this bracket. Don't even bother doing that. So go ahead and drill and mount up this ball and install this ball on this piece right here. What I did yesterday was I took this 12 inch scale and I got the end of it directly over the opening for the strut. Then I came up here to the edge of my hanger door and I pushed it with all my fatness until I could compress it all the way. It turned out to be 8.3 inches. Manual says to add 3 16 which is 0.187. I rounded that up to 0.2, so eight and a half inches. Then I just came over here, clamped this bracket temporarily in place, put some tape on here to mark it with, measured exactly eight and a half inches center to center, and that's where I attached that to the door. Done. And there it is. There's enough sag in this that it just it doesn't touch the wing unless you give it a little bit of help. Uh, it does not touch on this, which is important. So knowing that this was the hard door to get done, turn my attention to the next one. Probably started this one last night at 4 p.m. Already recounted how I just did the same thing. I took the old polycarbonate, stuck it on here, put on this acrylic piece, drilled a few key locations, trimmed it with my Dremel tool, which I did yesterday afternoon. Didn't bother finish sanding until today. I did take a little bit of video with my phone yesterday on how I located these using the short pieces of piece seal. So I just threw some pieces of tape on here after fitting this door in place. Made a couple marks. Now I'm going to put the piece seal on the other side. All right, now the door's sitting in place. I'm already using the latch at the bottom. I'm going to have it fit in the top, and I just have these clamps so it doesn't jump out of place. So I'll still be holding it very carefully. This hinge is going to live right here. So I'm going to give that a bit of a squeeze. I'm going to drill those two kind of sink holes upward into this cabin structure. Temporarily mount those, and then I will do the same in the back. So like I said, now I'm just going to put this piece on, uh, back drill those holes, clamp the whole mess back together, and I should be on my way to uh, drilling this hole and mounting up the gas strap for the side. Got those holes are drilled up, and then I came back with a step drill, opened them up two sizes, and deburred them. Opened them up because these are just here to look pretty, and anything you can do to make the alignment less fidgety uh, good idea job right now is to take these hinge halves mount them back to the airplane torque them not for the last time because again these are gonna have to come off so i can get the lot layout die off radius of corners make them look kind of nice uh, and then paint these white here's my vhb idea it's almost the thickness of the metal tabs here and here. Obviously, I'm not going to peel off the red layer here until it's uh, hopefully the last time I'll stick it on. Probably going to rattle can these. It's, a, it's actually a Nissan color, all this. I've uh, got these rivets uh, attaching the butt rib to that tab. It's just one of those details to let me down today, but got that done front and back. All right, well, I have the left door on, including the gas strut. I would like to say it came out. Perfectly like I predicted, uh, did not. I've got a little bit of a weld bead here I need to grind down. I wish I knew about that in advance because now I have to touch up some black paint. That's going to suck. I think uh, one of my challenges is it binds up a little bit, and the reason would be that this hinge pin, in theory, if a door is going to work correctly, has to exactly line up with that hinge pin. Chances of that here are pretty slim. I was hoping to be able to use these um, safety pins, basically just pull them out, pop the strut off, and then be able to fly without the doors. It'll still be possible to fly without the doors, but it's not going to be a two minute job like it seems like it should be. Kind of a bummer. I think in the summertime it'd be a scream to fly with the doors off. At this point I have the left door fitting okay not super happy with it see what i did the grinding off of the weld bead i might just take a sharpie pen to that don't tell anybody it's one of those things after about the 10th time of taking something apart putting it back together start to feel like one of those priests that whips themselves so they don't enjoy anything 
And then of course when you get frustrated with something, you go to everybody's favorite, the glare shield. Right now I have it pinned up to the boot cowl, which is locked in place. I cleaned up this opening, which is to say extra large. Kind of don't love that. Then I located and drilled to the Sky FX GPS antenna and the uh, two GPS antennas, one for each display. A little bit of redundancy. Yesterday I pinned this thing in and trimmed this edge off and I trimmed it off straight but it was floating around a little bit so today I made these L brackets you might be able to see kind of through the translucent fiberglass here I don't know if it's in focus or not they're just about an inch and a quarter square and what I did is I drilled a hole that is common to the hole where the uh, instrument panel mounts and then I drilled the number 40 in here used a strap duplicator drilled this hole in the fiberglass then I took an acetone rag and I cleaned off all the sharpie marks I've made so far came back and made another clean mark inside here a while back I picked up some molding which I wanted to put on the edge of my windshield excuse me that I wanted to put on the edge of the boot cowl where it touches the windshield and I also wanted to have something for the uh, edge of the instrument panel of course that just wandered off actually here it is right here uh, that other stuff I showed you has some looks like VHB looking tape on the inside this does not but this is a little bit bigger and it'll help to hide that LED strip that I'm going to put up here. Now it comes to trimming this edge and I've made this cardboard doll right here which I'm going to trim. It will allow for the molding to go on here and then it's going to transition upwards. I'm going to mark it across here relative to the bottom flange on the instrument panel. Then I can just take this, clamp it on the other side and uh, cut the other side to match this one. I'm using big radiuses on here because this molding, obviously it can't make a sharp bend without bulging out. This other stuff is narrower, but it's also much more rigid rubber and would be even less fond of making that corner. Here's what this looks like. This is the left side, the bracket. I have a floating nut plate riveted on, uh, 632. Well, it wasn't a complete disaster. Got this trimmed up for my cardboard template. The so 632 with a washer. Holding that in, it's still click code common to the windshield of the top, just in those two locations. The rest of them diverge. I got out the ultra suede material and a can of 3M spray 90. Should probably be a three person job, but I don't have that kind of staffing, so did it myself. Managed to not get any wrinkles. Doing Ortex is a outstanding practice for pretty much anything else in the world. Uh, GPS antenna, there's another one on the other side. Another GPS antenna, that's the SkyFX, which is for my Echo UAT ADSB in and out. This is a uh, NAV, uh, two of those. Spread them out so they get a decent view. Uh, this is the edge molding I tried on here, came out not too terrible. I also installed, probably won't be able to see it, the uh, LED strip, red LEDs on the bottom. I shortened it up a little bit because there's a plane we have at work where they did this LED strip and it goes too far around the corner so it's kind of uh, in your face. So I shortened it up so it is pretty much just shining down. Mostly just uh, theatrics and something fun to do. It's really pretty much a day VFR airplane. Anyway, this is not the final time that this is going to go on. I've decided to put the windshield back in. That is going to be the next thing I do. The only plumbing left behind here, now that I've got the GPS antennas figured out, is uh, hooking up the pitot static and AOA to the uh, MGL display. So there's some T-fittings I've got to figure out. Uh, shouldn't take too long. I think I have all the stuff I need for that. Just got to get it done and then uh, work on that windshield. All right, it just happened to be that the uh, plug was sticking through here, so here's the LEDs. I can see what I was talking about from, I'm not in a seated position, but even this, there's like one LED on that side. Um, I got it centered, so there'd be one annoying LED on this side. I might just tape it over, paint the end black. Uh, one thing I did, I trimmed all these with a razor blade and I poked the holes where there were fastener holes like these and the ones that are common to the windshield for the per the series 5 manual 
Then I came back with a soldering pencil that I was not emotionally attached to and I seared those holes. Hopefully that keeps them from fraying and then the adhesive is obviously pretty fresh. I know if I torque these too much, it'll probably gather that ultra suede and make it ugly, so it's just tight enough. Anyway, after the frustration of the doors, that's pretty fun. Today was uh, Chemlock Day. Not only installing, but learning how to install, because I knew nothing about the process. Pretty sure I made every possible mistake, but the end result, uh, they came out okay. Uh, two on the boot cowl. I did some nut plates in these locations here. Nut plates that have one lug. And I was trying to get one in here, but there's not even enough room. So I'm going to have to find a Tinnerman nut or something creative for that down there. I have some regular two lug number eight nut plates coming for these three. I don't think that one. The windshield is all sanded on all the edges. All the holes a quarter inch. All the holes in the butt ribs are number 21. Uh, early this morning, I was able to get off all the rest of the sprayed on protective coating, not the peel off plastic and not the peel off paper like came on the doors. This stuff came off like 95% of the way, but there was still some patches that wouldn't come off. I tried some uh, denatured alcohol on a piece that I had trimmed off that still had quite a bit of it. It worked great, didn't haze it at all, so it's been about a half an hour this morning getting off all the rest of that. One of the reasons I'm outside is because I did the uh, milled fibers in the trailing edge of the wing tips. So now I'm gonna, actually about done for the day, but I'm gonna cut this and then do some body and fender work. And last but not least, turtle deck. Um, oh, I gotta get that one still. I installed these cam locks. Actually, they are Skybolt. Uh, I did get these from Kit Fox. Uh, and then, with this installed and the windshield installed where it's going, I made a Sharpie line right here because I have located a supplier of the plastic hinge I might have referenced earlier that I'm gonna run across the top here. So it's gonna attach to the forward edge of the turtle deck, top of that header that's inside, and it'll be reasonably waterproof, as waterproof as anything on this airplane is. Uh, I'm an idiot, so I used this hardware right here, number eight fasteners, when number six would suffice, and I'm sure that's what's in the manual. So this set of number eight fasteners was actually the stuff intended for uh, all along here and across the top of the windshield. So I ordered a new brace of the what is it, AN-526, 1032R, whatever, oh, 832, to backfill all that, and then I guess the bottom line is the fasteners on my door will match windshield and everything else. All right, it has been a long two weeks. Do a little bit of body and fender work on these wingtips, then did the Deutsch connectors for the Wing tips, that's your position. Position is on, strobes. Also working. All right, well, that's it. Got to unpack, do some more stuff. Head out to work for two weeks. I'll have a bunch of hardware when I get back. Uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.